Welcome to our lecture on the reproductive cycles in the female animal. This presentation was adapted with permission from the lecture of Dr. John J. Parrish. At the end of the lecture, students would be able to describe the endocrinology behind the reproductive cycles in female domestic animals. Before we are going to discuss the reproductive cycle proper, we have first to uh, be familiarized with some of these terms. So ESTRUS or estrus is considered as a noun. It means that the female is standing to be mounted by another female or male animal. For example, the cow is displaying estrus. So that is ESTRUS. Another is uh, estrus or ESTROUS. Now that is considered to be an adjective. It is the length of the estrus cycle. Uh, for cows, the, the length of the estrus cycle is 21 days. So that is from one estrus to another estrus. For the British and the Europe European spellings, we also have the, the estrus, O-S-T-R-U-S. And we also have, you know, for the estrus cycle, we have the O-E-S-T-R-O-U-S. So these are the European spellings. So it is important to note that estrus and heat are synonymous. So again, when we say estrus, the female is standing to be mounted no, by another female or male animal. Another important term is the anestrus. So when the female is not cycling or when it is not having repeated estrus cycle, so it is said no, that the animal is not in heat or it is anestrus. So let's now proceed to the types of cyclicity. So different domestic animals have different types of cyclicity. So in the case of the cow and the sow, for example, they have this what we call polyesterous type of cyclicity, meaning that this type of animal has a repeated estrus cycle throughout the year. Of course, we have to note that the estrus cycle of the cow is 21 days. So this diagram shows the, uh, the estrus cycle of the cow. And uh, in this diagram, we have on the x-axis represents the months in a year. So this J here represents January, February, March, and so on. And the y-axis represents the relative amount of the estradiol that is present in the blood. So as you can see here, the peak of this graph here represents the estradiol. So when the estro estrogen or the estradiol peaks, it means that there is the manifestation of the estrous behavior of the animal. So this is a uh, type of uh, cycle is exhibited by the cow and the sow. We also have those animals that are seasonally polyesterous. Examples are the sheep and the horses. Um, when we say seasonally polyesterous animals, these are the animals that exhibit estrus during particular seasons of the year. For example, in the case of the ewe, they are considered to be short day breeders because they come into heat when the days are short. So for example, when uh, in fall, uh, the days are shorter. So the sheep or the ewe no, come into heat during this month. So examples of this are during September, October, and November. For horses, they are considered to be long day breeders because they breed or they come into heat when the, when the days are longer or in the spring. So example, when uh, in the months of the April, May, June, July, and August. So all of this are under natural light. And of course, uh, in, in terms of the length of pregnancy, you now we have for the ship, for example, the length of pregnancy is about five, five months. And the purpose of this is to get the young to be born and graze at an optimal time. The same is true for the horses. We also have those animals that are monoestrus, meaning that they exhibit single estrus during a year or maybe two estrus. So for example, in this diagram, the dog, for example, will only exhibit or will only peak estrus or will only peak you know, estradiol at one time. So again, this is exhibited for the dog, the wolf, and the bear. This diagram shows the average reproductive cycles of domestic animals. So start with the cow. So in terms of the length of the estrus cycle, so the average length of the reproductive cycles for most domestic animals is 21 days, so as exhibited by the cow, the sow, and the mare. Now, with the exception of the ewe, so the ewe has a shorter 
um, as length of the estrus cycle, but it's uh, because it is only 17 days. In terms of the length of the estrus, the animals also vary substantially you know, in these particular species. So in terms of the cow, for example, the length of the estrus or the heat is about 18 hours. For the ewe, that is about 29 hours. For the sow, that is about 2 days to 3 days or 48 to 72 hours. And again, this will vary according to the age of the animal. So for example, for the gilt, they will only have a shorter you know, length of estrus, that is 48 hours, as compared to the sow, which is longer, about 3 days per 72 hours. For the mare, it is uh, longer because it would take about 4 to 8 days. For the ovulation or the release of the egg you know, from the uh, tertiary follicle relative to the LH surge, of course, the, for the ovulation in the cow, this will occur about 11 hours after the end of estrus or about 21, 29 hours you know, after the onset of estrus. So this is on the uh, already you know, on the met estrus stage you know, because uh, the length of the estrus cycle, uh, because again, it occurs after the end of estrus. So that is on the met estrus phase. In terms of the U, you know, that is near the end of estrus. For the sow, that is about 35 to 45 hours after the start of estrus. So the average is about 40 hours. For the mare, again, the length of the estrus is about 48 days and ovulation will occur about 3 to 6 days of estrus or 1 to 2 days before the end of estrus. We also have the female dog. So in the pitch, they have a unique you know, estrus cycle because it is longer. That would take about six months. And for the length of estrus, that is nine days. And ovulation will occur four to 24 days after the start of estrus. So again, the estrus cycle in the dog or the female dog will vary. Um, some would have one and some would have two estrus cycle for a year. But of course, they're classified as monoestrous animals. The length will vary uh, also according to the size of the animal. So for example, for the large breeds such as the golden retrievers, the estrus cycle is about 7 to 8 months, while for the smaller dogs, they have a shorter estrus cycle. We also have the queen. The queen has a 17 days estrus cycle. The length of the estrus is about 9 days. And of course, um, the ovulation for the queen is it is you know, an induced ovulator, meaning that the breeding or mating will induce the ovulation of this animal. And uh, also, the queen is considered to be a seasonally polyesterous animal. For a recap quiz, what type of a cycle do the following species have and how long are they? For the cow, mare, and the witch. For the cow, of course, the cow is a polyesterous animal. They exhibit um, uh, estrus all year round. So the estrus cycle is about 21 days. For the mare, it is seasonally polyesterous, so it is a long day breeder. The estrus cycle is also 21 days, just like in the cow. And for the canine animal, it is a monoestrous animal. So they exhibit uh, estrus about one or two a year. And um, the estrus cycle is about six months. Uh, this diagram shows the variation in the cycle types of domestic animals. So the first group here are the cow, the ewe, the sow, and the mare. They have a long type of cycle because it would take about 21 days for it to cycle. For the follicular development, ovulation, and the CL function, it is considered to be spontaneous, meaning that these events are not induced, it just occurs. And for example, after ovulation, the CL is formed automatically. For the rodents, rats, mice, and the hamsters, they are considered to be short, short in terms of the type of cycle because it would take only four days. Fully functional CL is induced by the release of prolactin during breeding. So the CL function is considered to be induced. And if they failed to be bred, they won't produce prolactin. And again, they cycle for uh, four days. If they have prolactin release, uh, whether they get pregnant or not, they would have a CL that is maintained for the length of what pregnancy would be. 
For the rabbit, the cat, mink, ferret, otter, and the alpaca, they are in uh, the, the recycle are considered to be induced. Again, they are considered to be induced ovulator because uh, mating is important for ovulation to occur as well as the formation of the CL. In the case of the cat, for example, it's uh, penis and spines that is important for the stimulation during copulation. And this is what also induces the LH surge. The, uh, the CL is also induced in these species. So this is the diagram of what happens during the different phases of the estrus cycle. So the different phases of the estrus cycle are proestrus, estrus, metestrus, and the diestrus. At the top part, these are the structures that are found or that changes in the ovary during the different phases of the estrus cycle. So we have here, uh, for example, we have here the formation of the CL. The CL will become the corpus hemorrhagicum. And uh, later, no, it, uh, corpus albicans rather. Uh, we also have here the developing uh, follicle. Now we have, for example, here the growing follicle, the antral follicle, or the tertiary follicle, and later, later ovulate. And we also have here you know, the uh, series of the developing follicles that will undergo atresia. At the middle part, we have the levels of the different hormones. We have the P. Uh, P4 or the progesterone at this level. So the green part is the progesterone. We also have the PGF2 alpha, uh, the black one, and we also have the estradiol, the blue one. At the bottom is the levels of the uh, hormones FSH, black, and the luteinizing hormone or the LH that are constantly changing at the different stages of the estrus cycle. There are two major phases of the estrus cycle. We have the follicular phase and the luteal phase. So let's now proceed now to the follicular phase. So the follicular phase encompasses the proestrus and the estrus. So it corresponds to the time when the follicle grows until it undergo ovulation. So uh, we also have to take note that there are other follicles growing at other times, but it becomes a threat as shown in this diagram. So these are growing follicle, it will later on be a tertiary follicle, but these are not destined to ovulate, but it will undergo atresia. And of course, 95% or more of that follicles will undergo atresia. Under the follicular phase, we can also see the CL that is regressing that becomes the corpus albicans. Another phase of the estrus cycle is the luteal phase. The luteal phase encompasses the metestrus and the diestrus, at least for cows. The luteal phase corresponds to the time where the corpus luteum forms and becomes dominant. So again, uh, as shown in the figure, so after ovulation, the regressed follicle will become, of course, the corpus hemorrhagicum. It will later become the corpus luteum or the yellow body. The CL is, of course, the main source of the hormone progesterone. Progesterone is a hormone that is important for pregnancy. So, of course, as you can see here, the green line represents the level of progesterone during the different stages of the estrus cycle. So, as you can see here, during the luteal phase where CL is, is uh, dominant, so, of course, we can also see here a peak in the level of uh, progesterone. The different stages of the estrus cycle are proestrus, estrus, metestrus, and the diestrus. So again, from our previous uh, slides, we have seen that the proestrus and the estrus are included or under the follicular phase, while the metestrus and the diestrus are under the luteal phase. This diagram shows the labeled stages of the estrus cycle. So at this phase, this stage here is the Proestrus stage. During the proestrus stage, this is the period of time before the animal will ovulate. As you can see here, there is uh, this is a time also where the follicle grows and becomes very large. It becomes you now the antral follicle or the tertiary follicle. For the hormones, as you can see here, there is um, a gradual increase you now in the estradiol, and we also have here 
an increase in the level of the luteinizing hormone. After proestrus, we have the estrus stage. So the estrus stage is a period of time where the animal will show estrus or in heat. It begins at the time where the estradiol peak until it goes down. This will also correspond to the time when the, there is a surge in the LH, you know, the, the red line here. There is a surge in the LH and this is important for ovulation to occur. So of course for most animals, the ovulation will, will usually occur during the estrus stage. And of course, the LH is important. The LH surge is important for ovulation to occur. The next stage is the met estrus. So this is after estrus behavior and before the corpus luteum is fully functional. So again, after ovulation, it occurs usually during estrus, the regressed follicle now will become corpus uh, hemorrhagicum and it will later become uh, corpus luteum. So at this point, the P2 or rather the P4 or the progesterone is still low as shown in this diagram because the CL is not uh, usually formed at this stage. After met estrus is of course the diestrus. So during the diestrus, this is a time where a fully functional corpus luteum is present. So, of course, because of the presence of the fully functional corpus luteum or the yellow body, so, of course, there is, uh, during this time, a high level of P4 or progesterone that is seen in the blood of the animal. Cap of our proestrus. So, the proestrus belongs to the follicular phase of the estrus cycle because, again, it is where you know, the preovulatory follicle enlarges. So, the preovulatory follicle enlarges during this time. And of course, in terms of the level of the hormone estradiol or estrogen, there is an increase in the level of uh, estrogen. And of course, this is important for increase in the vascularity of the female reproductive tract. At this point, the endometrial glands also begin to grow and the estrogen levels peak also at this time. The next is the estro. So again, it is also under the follicular phase of the estro cycle. It is where uh, it is a time where the female will allow the male to mount it. Uh, during this time, the estrogen will decrease and the LH will surge you know, in preparation for ovulation. So ovulation, take note that ovulation will occur 24 to 48 hours after the LH surge. So this uh, red line here represents the LH surge and after one to two days, the animal will undergo ovulation. So there is also uterine motility, uh, high, high with contractions moving toward oviduct. So the estrogen is very important you know, for uterine motility during this time. This is important for sperm transport. And uh, during this time, we can also see an increase in the volume of the cervical mucus that is uh, uh, excreted you know, by the animal. For the metestrus, again, metestrus is under the luteal phase of the estrus cycle. So during this time, in terms of the hormones, the estrogen is low during this time because the, the follicle have ovulated. And the ovulation in the cow occurs during metestrus. So, of course, um, ovulation occurs in the cow um, that is about 11, 11 hours after the, after the end of estrus. So that is already in the metestrus phase. Uh, of course, uh, after ovulation, the regressed follicle will become the corpus hemorrhagicum, and the uterus contraction during this time subsides. The endometrial glands continue to grow and become coiled, and in cattle, it corresponds to the time when the bleeding occurs. So, in terms of the level of the FSH, so at, as shown in the black line, there is an increase in the level of the FSH, in preparation for triggering the growth of the follicles. Uh, the next phase is the diastrus stage. So of course, the diastrus is characterized by a high level of progesterone as seen in the diagram. This is because of the presence of a fully formed CL or yellow body. So during this time, 
the FSH increases at some point. So as you can see here, the black line represents the follicle stimulating hormone. This is uh, it increases at some point to cause the growth of the ovulatory follicle. So these are the follicles that are growing during this time. Uh, in terms of the uterus, so the endogland uh, secrete fluid, but the volume gradually decreases. The contraction of the uterus stops during this time, and the CL also regresses. This is in response to a high level of progesterone. So the, the CL will regress at the end of this period if the female is not pregnant due to the production of the PGF2-alpha from the uterus. So the PGF2-alpha will cause the CL to regress, to become the CA or the corpus albicans. For the recap quiz, which stage of the estrus cycle is characterized by preovulatory follicle indulges? Estrogen increases, vascularity of the female reproductive tract increases, and the metrial glands begin to grow and estrogen levels peak. This is a summary of the characteristics of the estrus cycle of the cow, the ewe, the sow, and the mare. For the estrus cycle, the, all of them has an estrus cycle of 21 days except for the ewe, that is 17 days. In terms of the, we also have here you know, the pre-estrus uh, pre stage in days, the estrus stage in hours, the metestrus in days, and the diestrus in days. Of course, the proestrus and estrus are the follicular phase. Of the estrous cycle for the the met and the dye are the luteal phase of the estrous cycle so in terms of the, the the length of the stages the longest stage is the diestrous and the shortest stage is the estrous phase estrous stage rather